Hello Twitch, how you doing? Welcome. This is the very first noisy chat. Uh, I'm going to start a podcast series talking to all the post guys uh, that I'm meeting through Twitch uh, and elsewhere. Like if there's people who want to be a part of it, let me know. Um, we have a Discord as well. So if you want to connect through the Discord, then I would love to get to know you and start doing more chats uh, with you guys here online. So the idea of this is just to talk to all the guys that are in the community uh, in posts who have, you know, different levels of experience, different studios, uh, you know, they all come in different shapes and sizes. Uh, and so we, yeah, I just thought it'd be a great chance to get to know other people and um, get inspired by what others are doing uh, to lift us all up. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, David Weaver, our very first interview. This is actually going to be a podcast as well. So um, you'll be able to check that out on uh, well, probably on iTunes and all that sort of stuff. But for now, we're having a chat on Twitch. So uh, welcome, David. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's, it's good to, you know, get out and do something a bit different. I, I think a lot of what's happened on this channel is pretty different. So it's cool. Yeah. yeah. And that's what, we're, that's what we're going for, for sure. Um, Look, if also guys, if you're watching, please say good day. We obviously can see uh, you guys in the chat. If you've got any extra questions or want us to dive deeper on any subjects, this is look. We've got, I've got questions. It's going to be maybe some sense of an interview, but uh, we really just want this to be a dialogue, a conversation, including you guys on chat as well. So um, people will be able to see you. Uh, I think there's a chat window come up. Uh, what do we got? Um, yeah, chat yeah, might come up as well there. So yeah, chat will come up as well. But you know, we want to get some back and forth as well with you guys uh, and chime in. So Timmy, welcome. It's great to have you. Um, cool. All right. Well, let's start with you, David. Please uh, just give us an introduction about yourself. Uh, tell us, you know, where you're based, uh, your experience, where you work, um, what you're working on. Well, you know, give us some of the basics first. Yeah, so uh, uh, predominantly I'm a sound designer. I'm based in Melbourne, Australia. Um, we I, I can't believe we haven't met, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm sure it'll happen at some point. But uh, no, I've been doing this for, uh, you know, eight to ten years. Um, as, a, as a student, I studied music as a composer and I wrote for a lot of theatre stuff and then sort of transitioned um, into firmly into sound design and became, became a sound designer and a uh, uh, a re-recording mixer out of a couple of studios. Um, I've, I've been uh, lecturing for the last couple of years uh, with the Abbey Road Institute and um, and sort of am involved in audio at a lot of different levels as an audio programmer, as an audio generalist. I like to kind of think of myself as that, I suppose. Beautiful. Nice. Uh, how'd the teaching thing come along? Teaching thing was pretty cool. Um, I actually got a teaching job while I was still studying um, because I guess knowing sound design, uh, sound design in Australia really is not, uh, hasn't, hasn't been a major teaching point. Um, you know, when we do classes in sound design, generally it's not actually how things are done in the industry because there isn't a massive industry here in terms of large scale following and things like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, so a lot of the stuff, essentially, like I, I got onto a lot of student films um, by my lecturers and then my lecturers uh, started seeing that, you know, I, I kept getting onto these student films that had really bad sound. I'd fix some of the sound and then um, become the sound designer for the next gig. And it just turned out that I was a better sound designer than I was a composer. So um, I sort of got the opportunity to essentially i i think there was at one point I, I fixed with another university that's here i think i did 12 of the 15 films at the time yeah wow so uh they it were just like do you want to just do that you know yeah yeah it's interesting like because i'm same sort of background i was a musician uh for a while there uh and composed as well for ages and i felt like there were so many composers out there but there wasn't enough post guys out there like obviously you had your large organizations your sound firms and all that sort of stuff but um, doing a bit of research, I just didn't see a lot of young, especially young up and comers. There's some guys who have been in the industry for a long time, um, but not as many young guys doing posts and stuff. And I just, I thought, look, I'm not, you know, it's not like there's a plethora of jobs and, you know, no sound designers or anything like that. But I just thought it was a good market to break into. And it definitely helps having that musical background, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, sound design and even trying to 
work around music and stuff, it is so good to have that background. And it seems really common that a lot of guys who are in post have come from that background as well. So that's cool. Mm, yeah. I, I think there's a, I think there's a much better established pathway for a musician, even though composers uh, don't necessarily have the headroom that audio post professionals have. I, yeah. I really do believe that there's, there's a lot of great opportunities. You know, when, when my, my lecturer found out that I wasn't going to be a composer and he was devastated, he was like, well, how could you be leaving composition? Composition's fantastic. And yeah. composition's the heart of the picture and composition's the heart of everything. And I was like, okay, well, you know, there's, there's a Foley artist and a backgrounds person and a dialogue editor and a sound mixer and a film mixer and a re-recording engineer and a dubbing. And there's one composer. And I just don't think that, you know, in, in terms of breadth of experience, you, you get to be involved in a lot of different projects if you're working on something in a smaller capacity or, or, or I mean, you know, what it's like having to do everything is not, not as, um, it's not as competitive at the same time as being, um, yeah, you can be a very valuable member of the team. I think if you, if you're yeah. not, if you're not trying to dominate everything with composition. Yeah, it is interesting in our industry, like everyone I talk to, like, you know, other directors and, and filmmakers and stuff, to them, sound designer is it. Like as in audio post or everything after, you know, when it comes to sound after the edit's done is a sound designer. And it's interesting, like I do so much educating of other like filmmakers and stuff and saying, no, no, there there are separate roles in the, you know, in, in this industry or in, in our industry and it's interesting just trying to like say, no, no, sound design is one, you know, not small, but one aspect of, of all the things we do. And unfortunately, that's just even now when I um, either put myself out there or, you know, looking at ads, I basically say, you know, I'll type in looking for a sound designer or whatever it might be, because that's basically what uh, everyone thinks we are or what we do and stuff. And it's interesting. I was talking to, um, I did a, a few days, I, I went into sound firm uh, when I was working my old job, I just weaseled my way in to spend a few days there. So I got this, it was not work experience or anything like that. I just sat in some rooms and chatted some guys and there's an old guy, Steve, old, old guy, I probably should say that to him. He'll what, maybe watch this and I'll be in trouble, but an older gentleman, more experienced gentleman, Steve, who he did like strictly ballroom and all these like Aussie classics. And he refuses, he calls himself sound editor and he, because of his experience, he tends to get his own title at the end of the credits. And he just hates sound designer as a word. He's like, I edit sound. It's like a video editor. They edit picture. I edit sound, you know, like even though he's probably, you know, using different synths or whatever it might be, plugins to really like manipulate the sound, he still's like, no, no, I'm a sound editor. I get pre-existing sounds and I edit them, you know. And so I love that. And even now I'm like, I'm fighting this whole, I don't want to call myself a sound designer because, you know, I, I definitely still design sounds, but I would say I'm more, more of a sound editor, but. It's just some an observation that I found. So, um, I, I think it's a pretty pretty cool distinction you have there because it's it's a lot like uh, I've sort of gravitated more towards the sound design for a very similar reason. In that, um, I I try and think of you know, uh, in terms of what's the word I'm trying to think of of like meta diegetic. You know, what what are the characters hearing in their head? What what's the influence that we can have with sound on the story? You know, yeah. so when, whenever I'm talking to a director, I'm trying to think about, well, how come I, obviously I have to do all the sound editing stuff of fixing, fixing up these things, but is there a way that I can do it in, in, a, a, you know, is there a way that I can elevate the story and elevate, elevate the characters through really clever sound design, not necessarily just editing or maybe yeah. not, I don't, I don't mean to say just editing because I view myself as a sound editor as well, but um, I, I like the idea that sound design as a, as a, as a, principle kind of gravitates this idea of you know playing with the direction you know I, I hate when you when you work on a film and you kind of get this thing of like you redesign the door slam and they're like but that's not what it sounded like on set and you're like yeah, yeah. but it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah 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 it's good cool um so you say so you're freelance so you have a few studios that you work out of but you don't particularly work for anyone you just freelance so um, um do you, do you well, just as, hire as of, studios yeah. out or as of recently uh, is that as of as of uh, a couple of days from now um it'll probably be like that but uh that's all right why not so um <laughs> the uh yeah predominantly I, I do most of my work for mixing out of a, a studio called original score 
Um, that's a 5.1 room that's set up uh, by my old lecturer that actually got me the first gig I had in um, sound. And we've worked on a number of pictures together and a couple of features and uh, some docos and stuff that we've done really well. And uh, that's, that's the studio I, I guess I call home. Yep. And then ever since um, Abbey Road Institute Melbourne haven't well have sort of moved to Sydney or are moving to Sydney, uh, my main my main place is now at home, like like everyone is. Uh, but I, I think freelancing uh, from from home sent, tends to be one of the uh, one of the big things for the industry. In some in some part of your life, you're always going to be freelancing uh, yep. from home, um, and and you know, or, or, or in another studio. Um, there are a couple of studios I'll go to for tracking and things like that, but I am, I'm also pretty well set up in terms of, uh, gear and stuff. And depending on the kind of gigs I have, you know, you, you have some gigs where you really do need quite a bit of gear and then some gigs where you, you don't need the space, you know, yeah. currently I'm yeah. working on a, a couple of video games for, um, well for talk drift, which is a, a drifting and racing game. And they, uh, you know, I'm doing car engines and things like that. So, you know, really what's important to me probably over the next six months will just be building my field kit up and taking that out and being able to, um, yeah, just being able to take that around and be able to, you know, get six to eight microphones on a car and yep. record that. So the, the actual mixing space isn't as important as an editing space, which can be pretty much done anywhere nowadays. Yeah. And that's like become a huge thing, right? Like as in, so before this space that I'm in now, I'm subleasing basically a room that gets used on Sundays and that's it. But other than that, like it's, it's my space to use. Um, but I used to be at home in a, the only reason why I moved out is because we had another kid and that had to turn into a bedroom. Um, and I was fortunate enough to be able to get this space, but um, it's become huge. Like it's so easy for us to, to do what we do, obviously to a degree, you know, you'd, need if you want to if you're going to mix a, a film for theater if you don't at least have a space you can test your mix out you should be you know ideally you'd mix in that space but fortunately you know in melbourne there's some great theaters that we can go and i can check my mixes and i've found that most of them translate quite quite well but at the end of the day most of the things we can do you know editors these days just most of them are even using headphones like you know with headphones you can actually pick up stuff sometimes that you can't on certain monitors or whatever but the end of the day it is just a great thing that we can be doing our stuff from home and now's an appropriate time to be sitting at home and just chugging along and working in isolation so yeah it's mm. cool i find um, i find it really hard to leave a space once i know that it translates really well yeah, you know I, yeah. I, this this studio that i'm at in hawthorne it's uh it, it just translates so well like i sat in front of a mix at um at a cinema maybe three weeks ago and it just translated perfectly and i was like yeah i just how can i leave this space i know what yeah. it sounds like i know the monitors i know the room i know it so well and i, I always get really nervous because sometimes you know you, you do a lot of work on a picture and I, I try not to be my own re-recording mixer that's one of those things i really try and avoid if i'm sound designing the picture or if i'm sound editing the picture i really don't want to be the re-recording mixer as well I like like, that. i'll do it if i have to but i really need someone else's opinion i need someone else's um ears just on it just to be like is this is this really going to translate because if i'm the only person and i've just managed to sort of you know trick the director into believing that it's the right thing for them to do that i, I really hate the uh hate that and you know sometimes you you work really hard on a picture and then you get told that it's there's a re-recording mixer and you know the last film i or maybe not last film but a film i was on in november i think it was was saying oh can we come to your studio and mix it and i was like but you're the re-recording mixer <laughs> and he was like yeah yeah I'll, I'll mix it at yours and i was like you can't mix it at mine like but uh, ha what do you mean you don't know the room you don't know the speakers you yeah, yeah, you, yeah what are you talking course. about and yeah. he was just like oh well it's fine like oh there's a music studio i'll use and i was like no no you like you shouldn't be a re-recording mixer if you don't have the space and you can't like i'm sorry but you really you can't yeah you yeah, yeah it's interesting like because i i've always pretty, pretty much like so when i used to work for an organization doing their media stuff and i did everything like you know with any of the projects i would do everything even from composing like this is before things like art list where you could just download you know source music really easily and cheaply so i'd write all the tracks i'd mix everything i'd do the sound design the location recording even like music projects and stuff, I would mix and master it because we had no money, um, like no money out of 
my wage or whatever. And it's just, it's interesting. Like, so that industry as well, so many mixers don't like mastering as well. It is that good thing of having fresh ears on it, having someone else to, um, I guess, elevate what you've already done. Um, and I find that difficult in this industry. Like I, and this is great hearing this from you as well, because I've, I've got a few guys that uh, I've been using to do bits and pieces, some Foley and even just project organization. But one thing I don't think we're doing well enough, um, I guess even in the indie space in, in Melbourne or in Australia is that sharing of the post stuff. They are, unfortunately, it's mostly because there isn't enough money. Like we are the last thing basically, you know, obviously there's color grading and stuff and sometimes visual effects, but mostly they've exhausted their cash. And so the thing that I find difficult is they're like, this is what we've got left over. And I'm like, that's barely going to give me a, a wage and I can't even really share. Like sometimes I have been, I'll just share that with, you know, different like a Foley artist or whatever people that can just help me build, you know, while I'm doing the dialogue editing, they can kind of build the sound underneath it and all that sort of stuff. I, I tend to like to do a lot of the sound design, but for me as well as I'll get to the re-recording mix stage and I'll be almost exhausted from the film as well. It's, it is such a good idea to then, you know, once all that's built to just give someone the chance with fresh ears to just mix, you know, really balance it and come at it from a new angle. For me, like I kind of mix as I go, but I get to the mix stage and we're also running out of time because I'm like, you know, I've done the dialogue cleanup, the sound design, yep. sound editing, you know, put it in ambiences, some foley, sometimes I'll outsource, but, you know, I'll do all that. And then I'm like, oh, we've got a few days to do the mix and, you know, there's not enough time to really dive into that. Um, and you know, in those stages, that's where you can make great story decisions. Like, you know, do we just drop all the sound in this bit or whatever? Like you don't really get time to do that. It's just like, let's just get this thing balanced and good enough to be released. So, um, mm. yeah, it's, uh, it's just something that I've also not found that, um, I don't tend to have a lot of projects given to me just as a re-recording mixer, which is where I, I want to, or that's my main area I want to be known for. Um, and I want to like gather different crews so that, you know, I've got a dialogue editor, I've got someone who'll do Foley and even someone who can do a lot of the sound design. And I might like, you know, polish it off, polish it up and maybe add some new stuff, but really just spend my time on getting the mix and really like, you know, doing that. But yeah, it's just, it's interesting that, you know, in Australia, I don't feel like people know that there are multiple roles when it comes to audio post as filmmakers and stuff and that they shouldn't be just saying, who's going to do my, like the last feature I did, the guy was like, oh, I really need a mix on my feature. And then as soon as we dived in the conversation, I was like, no, no, you need audio post-production the whole lot. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, the his mix thing. budget, his mix budget would have been okay as a mix budget, but it wasn't an audio post budget and also his time frame. But, you know, is what it is. Anyway, I, I'm, I I'm it, taking your, really, really, taking up yeah, your time. No, but. <laughs> I, I find it, I find it really funny where we have, um, you have, you know, uh, I was, I'm always reading books about post-production to get started. And, you know, the books on post-production are like, oh, are you, the Foley artist will do this and the backgrounds person will do that and the dialogue editor will do this. And I'm just like, hang on, why, why do I have to do everything all yeah, the yeah. time? Yeah. Like, how is that fair? They're always like, oh, no, no, it's fine. Just, you know, just give that to the backgrounds guy. And you're just like, okay, that's not really fair. And, you know, <laughs> I, I think that I like adding, as Ben said, you know, it's fun to collaborate. The whole idea here is that we're, we're supposed to be making films together, not just pushing one person's vision through a small pipe until it gets to the other side. You know, yeah. it's something that I've, something that I learned when I was doing the last feature I, I was, I did everything on was that, you know, I was, I was doing Foley for absolutely everything just so when it got to the re-recording stage and I finally had everyone in the same room for like a week, we were just like, oh, what does this sound like with no music? What does this sound like with only music? What does this sound like? And it was just, you know, like obviously it took a long time to do all the Foley, but it was nice to finally have options instead of just, you know, you you really feel like you're just trusting your very first in instinct. You know, if there's yeah. music there, then there's always going to be music there. And, you know, I've, I've found so many times, I mean, you, you'd find this a lot as a re-recording mixer. Like sometimes in the mix, you're just like, hmm. I think we should do no music here. And everyone just like the whole room just stops because they're like, oh, we never considered that. And yeah. therefore there's no sound design and there's no backgrounds and there's no edit and there's nothing done. And it's just like, oh, there's no coverage for anything. Yeah. You know, which yeah. is hard for a lot of people, I think. Yeah, for sure. For sure. 
Um, so tell us who inspires you within uh, either within the industry or even outside of it, like who inspires you to be creative and what you do? I found, um, I found a lot of different people across different times. You know, I was, I was really lucky to have a really good university group when I was studying in that I was the worst in my class in the first year. And, uh, you know, I was, I was pushed really, really hard by a couple of really good friends to be better and to take things more seriously and to be a lot more professional. And while, while not all of them are working in the industry and, and while some of them are um, as, as composers now and, or as programmers now, you know, and I think those guys will know who I'm talking about there, they, they're, they're pretty inspiring just the way that we sort of approach that. Uh, my, my lecturer who runs, or my old lecturer who runs Original Score, George Papa Nicolau, um, he deserves a big shout out because he sort of gave nice. me gave me a whole leg up and starting nice. out in the in the career and um and then and then you have you know the the some of the people at the top you know but but I've also been really inspired just recently by a bunch of field recorders that I know um, or that I've met on Twitter and and some of the the game audio people that I've been meeting on Twitter like uh, Mike Neediquil who did uh, like God of War and Death Stranding and those sort of games as a supervising sound editor or sound designer. I'm not sure, sound lead. I'm not sure what his title was. Um, and and like Anton Waldhack who did uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. So there's a, there's a lot of different people and maybe something that's really, really inspiring about all of the best sound editors and sound designers don't care about gatekeeping and hiding their knowledge yeah. you know they're, they're yeah. all really excited to get onto it like mark kilborn you know he's he's a guy from skywalker ranch and he's like just posting you know what he's doing in like reaper and yeah. cool stuff on twitter and you're just like i've learned so much from just following people like like i'm learning from from your stream here you know just Thanks, in terms of that. just just checking out stuff and you know what we've been able to find with some of the people that have been jumping in the stream like everyone's yeah. able to get get oh, the big get the get the qualification that we we never really had yeah you know? and uh, that that and really this is also why i started this thing is um you know i definitely know that i um i've got so, years of experience with Pro Tools and there's things that I probably take um, take it for granted. Like there's just stuff that I've picked up over the time, whether it's, you know, watching other people on YouTube and things like that. But I do have stuff to share, but mostly like I want it to be interactive. Like the, honestly, I I come home at the end of most days and Sarah, you know, my, Sarah, my wife is like, I had your stream go and I'm like, oh, this happened today. Like even, you know, when, so uh, you should check it out, guys. We were doing some uh, sound effects or whatever. And I was like, oh, I need some Foley just of an acoustic guitar getting handed over. And so, you know, I'm going to call you Weaver because that's your name on thing. But Weaver's just like, oh, sweet. I've got a, car, a guitar right next to me. Give me a minute. And so I just kept moving on and working on stuff. And then five minutes later, here is this like small library of and um, Foley, you know, acoustic handing over sounds. And that was perfect. I just chucked a few in and, they just worked beautifully, like straight up. And I was like, this is the first time that someone's probably done some quick folly over the internet like this. Um, and, but even just, you know, the back and forth that we're getting, so many people are chiming in with like, oh, have you tried yeah. this reverb or, you know, um, even, you know, there was a shortcut that you, you told me about the other day. Cause I was, I thought my process was pretty quick, you know, and then you in one instance, like, here's the other one that is even quicker. So I was like, you know, in three presses, you showed me how to do it in one. So um, it's just, yeah, been great getting all this interaction and I guess, uh, I want us to be as a or, industry, just be more open to sharing ideas and stuff and, you know, not feeling like we have to compete. I have found actually, it's really great that if anytime you reach out, like even uh, same with sound firm, like I reached out and said, look, I don't get to do any formal training through work or there's no big budget. Can I come and just hang out? And so they let me sit in on, they're working on a feature film and I got to, got to watch Steve edit and I got to watch their, you know, their re-recording mixer, um, do some work there in Atmos as well, which was huge. And it's, it is great. Then when guys online, if you reach out, most of the, like the top guys in the industry are more excited that people actually care about them and what they're doing. And are so excited that actually someone's noticed that they're willing to just talk with you about what they do and, and, and interact and stuff. So I, I do think it's fantastic. Um, and that's cool that you've, you've been reaching out and guys who are obviously doing great work, um, in the industry of gaming and, you know, you're obviously trying to squeeze as much knowledge out of them too, which is cool. Mm. I like that. It's, it's been funny. It's been funny the way that I, I, I always view, um, it's something I was saying a lot to my students was that mentorship is, is really, that's what everyone's looking for. 
Everyone's yeah. looking for for someone to just like be over their shoulder and be checking out what they're doing and be like, you know, slap their hand away when they're doing something wrong or just like constantly trying to find ways to improve things or, or, or maybe maybe not always, but, you know, just always sort of a guiding hand. And it was it was quite funny because after a long time, like it's great to hear you talking about SoundFirm so positively because my, my first experience with SoundFirm was so negative. Um, and it was, it was really disappointing because I'd worked really hard on this film and I just got absolutely ripped to shreds by the guy that was mixing it. And I, okay. I, I don't think he's, he's there anymore, but, and, and I'm not going to like name drop or anything, but, yeah. um, and you know, there was definitely things that I could have improved and essentially I had two mixes in a row with this guy. And the next time I went, I'd like, I'd stayed up all night trying to improve the Pro Tools session and drop it all in and try and fix all the things that he'd said. And, and it was good because, you know, the next day was, was okay because we managed yeah, okay. to fix it all. And yeah. it was like, it was good because I'd, I'd learned how to do a million and one things really, really quickly, but it would have been bad if I was not the person of that kind of constitution that wouldn't have handled that feedback that well. And I think that, yeah. you know, particularly in like high intensity, situations where you know you're talking about like mixes like mark mangini or something like right at the top 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 people that are all like skip leaves or something you know you imagine when there's millions and millions of dollars on the table like how intense that is and and, and you just feel for the people that uh don't get a chance to work out you know how how to give feedback properly so yeah, yeah. you know be, being able to just like drop drop people a line and ask how something's done is is so invaluable and and i don't think there's been anything that's actually been able to do that in a really long time you know i think that for 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 ages it's been sort of everything's been closed by people saying no no go to university and then you'll get to have a conversation with a lecturer who will sort of tell you the basics of it or wait till you know you've got the opportunity to be in a place like sound firm and i hope that you do get a chance to sit down with someone that's really important yeah, you know, I I think that their um, the particular re-recording mixer that was there at the time, uh, he didn't have a great attitude. As in, like everyone else was so open to me, and I'd mm, ask him questions mm. and stuff. He, he was talented. As in, listening back every time, I was like, oh, there's something there that's irking me. Either in the you know something EQ wise on certain sound effects, where I was like, oh, that's a bit off. And I just like I just sat. I didn't really ask a lot of questions because he wasn't really happy about it. Which you know understand he's working and stuff but um i don't know how often he has people in there just curious but every time i was like oh that thing's irking me you know a couple of passes and it was fixed and I, you know so i was always very um you know impressed with what he was doing but his attitude was yeah, just not so open which you know it's not for everyone and that's probably why he's a re-recording mixer because he can hide away in a dark room and just work on his you know thing but i guess you've also got to be personable because you've got to work with directors and all that kind of stuff uh, which he was well, actually like, the, which wasn't the issue. He was fine with them. It was obviously because I was hanging about or whatever, and he wasn't interested in sharing his knowledge. But um, it was all good. Um, anyway, we'll move I think on. That, um, I think <coughs> that uh, possibly. Sorry, no, it's, no, no, no go for it. It's all good. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm happy. Um, in in terms of, uh, I I really feel like having composition as part of a background helps to alleviate that a lot because the one thing that you always hear people talking about is like you know, sound effects has to crap all over music and music has to do the same the other way. And then when you're actually a composer and then you turn into a sound designer, you realize like, oh no, some things are just better with music and some things are just better with sound effects. And it should be all about the picture anyway. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I definitely, it's interesting in that sense as well as a re-recording mixer, when I talk to composers about sending me stems and stuff, they're all just like, oh, like some of these guys who maybe (laughs) it could be that they don't have the experience or whatever and don't sort of know how it is. And I'm kind of, I basically say to them, if you don't send me stems, you're just like, rather than me back, like, you know, let's just say there's a certain um, sound synth, whatever, that's clashing with a certain sound effect in that moment that's most important to the story, rather than me just pulling that out or, you know, whatever it might be, EQing certain frequencies, I have to then just duck the whole music out of the way or, you know, basically Mm. just do that on the whole um, score. And so I say to them, it's, you know, most of the time I'll say it'll be the director's choice because I don't do things without their approval because, you know, you always put it back on the director. So they're all good. But at the end of the day, I'll say, if you don't give me stems, then there's a good chance that, you know, your whole score is going to be ruined or pulled out of the way and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, again, it's just education and stuff um, in that sense too. But you're right. It does definitely help knowing i guess even the you know having 
the understanding of um, notes and frequencies and or, or like just knowing um, where stuff sort of sits in the frequency range. I think you get a better understanding of a lot of that stuff when you work in music, whether it's composing and mixing mm. music, you understand it. Like I guess compared to just being someone like a, a field recorder who's then moving into um, sound design and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, cool. Uh, let's move on to favorite gear and or plugin uh, other than Isotope is going to be my question that I'm going to ask everyone. So <laughs> Isotope's off the table, which is probably most post person's favorite piece of gear because we all need it. Let's be honest. Uh, so yeah, yeah, tell us favorite maybe plugin or and or gear. You can give us one of each or. I'll, I'll you. give you. I'll give you one of each. I got to think about the plugin, which is funny. But um, no, I think my my favorite piece of gear is actually in the shop at the moment. But it was uh, I, I got a it was the first preamp I bought. It was a Amec Neve ninety ninety eight, and um, it's a really really nice preamp. And it just kind of blew my mind as to what you got for a grand or fifteen hundred bucks or something like that. And it was suddenly I could record things and I could actually generate my own material and then I could build my own effects and, and things like that. And that to me, that was, that was the most freeing. So it's, while it's, it, it is a specific piece of gear, probably the thing that blew me away the most was the fact that it was a dedicated preamp, you know, actually, actually having a dedicated preamp was just, that changed my whole process yeah. um, in terms of that. Um, is, it racked, I guess, is it a racked, it's a racked preamp? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's a racked preamp. Um, and it's just, I guess, from going from having like a Focusrite 2i4 or whatever I had at the time and getting something that's really, really concrete and something that's just, it's $1,500 worth of something that's just supposed to be a preamp yeah, as opposed to, thing. you know, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You know, you, you know, the difference of getting like a little interface that has, uh, you know, it's supposed to do a thousand things and it's only a hundred bucks. Like yeah, it's yeah. every of component course. is $5 worth of stuff, you know, or less most yeah. of the time um for a plugin oh man plugins a hard one i think uh maybe I'll, I'll go along the same train of thought and go contact contact five okay um in it i really don't use it a lot for sound design oh no i probably do use it a lot for sound design but for essentially again the same kind of reason is that it sort of changed the game of what sound design could be for me in that what i what i used it for was uh, building and programming my own instruments and being able to take a recording of, um, you know, my dog barking and turn it into like a massive dubstep smash and be able to pitch it all over the keyboard and stuff yeah. like that. It's, uh, you know, as a, as a creative tool um, and, and being able to, you know, record a, a cool folk instrument and then build just something that you could be a composer out of it, um, maybe more so than, you know, sound design. But again, I think, just finding those those things that really throw my work my workflow up like at the moment i just got um pro sound effects search which is the hardest search algorithm search software that you'll ever find to try and find online so you can't google search and you can't google pro sound effects search and you can't google you can't you just it doesn't exist so um but it's uh it's essentially like a meta uh, what's a metadata searching thing like sound miner um, or like Soundly or something like that. And uh, it can spot to Pro Tools and pitch things up and down and you can highlight particular regions and things like that. And that as a workflow thing for me has been pretty unbelievable. Sweet. We should um, gonna... add that to Sorry. Discord. Add, add that to Discord if you can, mate. It'd be good to share yeah, that. Um, that's cool. Uh, sweet. What are we getting? What about to? you? What's, what, what's, what are your top ones? Uh, don't ask me. This is not about me. <laughs> What do you mean? It's um, noisy chat. Oh, actually, not, one, no, not noisy yeah. one-way interview. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, <laughs> so can I ask though with um, with Contact, because I've done a bit of work in, in Contact just having to play, but how extensive is your like programming been in that? Because um, I know it's pretty simple to just drop sounds in. You can do a bit of like, you know, tweaking samples and stuff, um, you know, even just like fading ins and outs and, you know, LFO or whatever. But how deep have you gone into that? Um, <laughs> strangely strangely deep so if you if you go <laughs> onto youtube and you look up contact script programmer there's about four chapters of videos of me and a, a couple hundred hours of something of me looking into scripting and essentially uh what i decided to do was uh go through the contact manual and make a video about every single point of every function and build a uh build 
a sort of app, uh, not build an app, uh, build a build an instrument or build a use for it. So yeah, it okay. was um, it was it, essentially it got me lots and lots of contact script programming jobs. So if anyone wants to be a contact script programmer, I got heaps of work for them. But um, <laughs> the uh, yeah, it's I, I, way too much time. But then you know I was um, skyping, well not skyping, whatever they use in Germany to get to their uh their their native instruments people and um they basically when i was like you know that contact six is cracked right and they're like no it's not cracked and i was like yeah no it's cracked like my students tell me all the time about every piece of software that's cracked and they were like oh (laughs) i was like okay but you know that like a couple of friends of mine who i've done some like contract work with um or submission audio actually we'll do the we'll do the do the name drop for them why not they do um bases and what they do like specifically metal vsts and bases and things like that um really 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 cool guys uh andy and ermin but uh anyway they definitely check them out if you're into like really intense metal bases and punk bases and stuff like that vsts but yeah. uh when we were when we were diving through um with native instruments to try and work out some stuff for them they were like oh well you know it's not really that's a feature request and we're like well it's not a feature request like the thing's cracked and they were like oh well so they're just deciding not to not to really fix it so i'm not really sure what's the deal with native instruments but uh i guess they they just they i don't know they got like 600 employees and they no, no time to fix blatantly cracked pieces of software. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair so enough. I sort of, I sort of moved away from it. I, I went, I moved <laughs> away from contact into um a lot of uh, machine learning stuff. Now, yeah, is the probably the main main area of attention for me when it comes to uh, programming instead of KSP. But if you need done, something done in contact scripting, let me know. I can help Beautiful. You out. Sounds good. Um, ah, oh, me. That's a a good question uh gear gear um uh i used um got to check out i can't even freaking remember the name i did a a um i'm not even gonna find it doesn't matter don't worry about it it's not gonna work um to be honest (laughs) I am a huge fan of Insight. I know it's uh, not RX. It's Isotope. I know it's Isotope, <laughs> but it's not RX. No, uh, that's true. I can't live without my meters. Um, yeah. I find it's a game as well. Like I, I posted on the Discord the other day, we were working on Filth and I nailed minus 24 and it's a freaking game for me. I love it. Um, now, for me, that that plugin is uh, just amazing. Like. I found that Pro Tools metering and stuff is just hit and miss. As in, they've got so many mm. options in there, but none of them are great. Um, but as a re-recording mixer, that is a thing that I have all the time open. Like I, I use a lot of the standard Pro Tools plugins for a lot of things. I keep things pretty basic when it comes to my mixing. But um, the only thing that is always consistent is uh, Insight. It's that's such a boring answer. Uh, no, I, I should, think I think that's should pretty think cool. about like, that again. No, 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 it's not cool. It's a terrible answer. Scopes. I mean, it is pretty <laughs> terrible. Yeah, I mean, it is bad. You could, Actually, there's you one know, feature what? that I um haven't used much of that I I saw a video of it the other day. There's intelligible intelligibility or something or intelligible. Oh, on it's there. so good. You have to okay. get onto intelligibility. It's, it's yeah, so that's great. the one thing that I haven't used enough of, and I definitely um I've yeah, it's something I've got to. So you're pretty much just Use using Insight One. That's <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. I'm not even using the best part of Insight Two, right? <laughs> like the whole reason to use it is for that that feature alone. I like I tried it early on, and I was like, oh, what you know? How is this helpful and stuff? And I just never never went back to it and stuff. Um, mm. So no, I find it I, I find it's yeah. pretty good as something you can bring up as a conversation point. Like uh, if you're ever you know, a director's um, asking you like, oh, are, we, are we losing that line a little bit? And you can pretty much bring up the intelligibility and you'd be like, oh, look, yeah, it's a little bit low on the, uh, on the intelligibility scale here. And it's kind of a, a little bit of a <laughs> you can little use bit it of to a your way advantage. to save points. Yeah, 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 yeah just yeah. save points of something you just clearly missed, you yeah. know, but, um, but it's, no, it is, it is, it is pretty great. Like it, uh, I think, especially when you look into like, I'm not really massive into neutrons, um, visual mixing, stuff like that. I mean, it's yeah. similar, similar kind of approach, but uh, 
you know, it's not really a mixed by numbers thing. You're not, you're not going to be sitting there saying, oh, well, it's too low on the intelligibility, so we're not going to look at it. But yeah, um, it, it is good at just, you know, metering is always going to be there for you to just kind of bail you out. You know, specifically, I find myself using that for um, the phase scopes and, you know, the lissage or whatever it's called of the, you know, stereo width and being yeah. like, how, how far can I kind of push this? And, you know, especially because if you are mixing on cans sometimes, you know, just to get something to a pre-dub stage, you want to be yeah. able to take it there and and know that you're not going to be blown away, you know, especially with, with music widening nowadays, you know, with everyone slapping music with isotopes, multiband, spectral, whatever it's called, uh, yeah. to make everything super wide and unbelievable. You know, it's the phase of stuff is all over the place at the moment. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 um, no, nah, look, hardware, uh, to be honest, I, I don't, I've just not been big on hardware as in, you know, one thing I really invested in was my monitors recently. My, like I've got these old school PMC, they're old as, and I got this sweet deal, bought them from some auction. Like they, I don't, they, it must be an auction site that buys just like, you know, older states when people die or like buildings that, um, you know, companies that shut down. So I fortunately bought these and to be honest, like, it was nice for me because I've never, even as someone who has mixed, been a mixer either in music or in film for so long, you know, I've got my Bay Dynamic headphones that I love, which I see that you're wearing them as well. Um, and I those things I love, too. but even like, <laughs> you know, I'm not, they're reasonable, but they're not like, you know, they're not really expensive. They're not the most amazing headphones, but I trust them. But I've never spent a lot of money on on gear, just like, you know, I've always put a bit of money into a computer, but just not so much like all the mm. extra bits and pieces. Even as you say, like a, a good preamp and stuff, I normally just have the interface for, for things like that. Um, I'll, I'll go, I'll add a couple of plugins because I feel like I gave you a really crappy one because, you know, you shouldn't put me on the spot. This is me interviewing you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so one of them is, uh, little, if you've been watching the stream, you'll know Little Alter Boy. Um, little Alter Boy is just... It's one of those Check. plugins. It's simple, but I use it all the time. It's great for manipulating voices or sound effects and really like pitching things up and down. And, you know, I love being able to, to change the format compared to the pitch and stuff. And really like, it just, it's so good on dialogue. It's so good on, like I use it in music tracks and stuff. Um, mm. But I, I definitely use it a lot in, in the latest production I've been working on, uh, on the stream. But I if, think if it's you're really pretty into, cheap. Um, if you're really into hey, whoever that is. boy, um, if you're really yep. into little, yeah, that's that's my fiance's deciding to just walk around and it's all I good. Know, no, no, it's knock, great. Knock, knock stuff in there, but yep. um, <laughs> anyway, um, the uh, yeah, if you're really into little altar boy, check out Manipulator by Infected Mushroom. Okay. Um, really really incredible for really unpredictable things does does the format and the pitch shift it's a little bit like uh vocal synth 2 isotopes okay. vocal synth 2 which is you know obviously another one to worth be worth checking out not as transparent as little alter boy in that little alter boys you know you can as you said you can use it on pretty much anything but if you're into something creative um yeah check out manipulator it's pretty cool sweet sweet mm. we need to remember to put all these remind us if we don't to put them in the discord uh, yeah, that's yeah. another thing, guys. If you're not on the Discord, definitely yeah. definitely get on the Discord because we're doing a lot of chatting on there and stuff as well. Um, one other cool plugin I'm going to share, um, Krotos, who I know they've got um, is a dehumanizer that everyone uses. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't used their, I can't even remember what it's called, the other one that they've made. Um, Reformer or Weaponizer? Reformer, yeah, I think it's Reformer. Um, I used that on a, so I was doing some audio for, it was, for a game, it was kind of for a gaming thing. It was actually, um, oh no, I don't know what to, I can't share too much because I signed an NDA. But anyway, it was kind of a gaming vibe and I used it for, um, there's a lot of robots and stuff in this thing. So I basically just set up a mic and I had, um, there was a lot of robots moving in the screen and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And I just could make noise with my mouth as it was moving, like swishy sounds or whatever. And mm. you can apply, basically it uses frequency and amplitude. You can apply, I put, electronic sounds I, I either got sounds from uh recorded them or got them off my library that i use and then i could just basically with my mouth it's almost like doing foley i could just act out movements as they were moving across the screen uh and it would just do all these 
you know, cool electronic glassy sounds and stuff as these things were floating around. And for sound design, like it was, it was awesome. And even I've, I've tried it. Um, I've also used it for Foley as well. So if you've got Foley footsteps, which sometimes again, I'll just get someone else's Foley footsteps and cut them in, which I know you can do that with contact as well. You can play it in uh, as well, but it was great for just getting like a leather sound effect and you could put it over the top. So as they stepped, you heard the leather crunch or a backpack mm. shaking and stuff. And I just, like it just made the workflow quicker. It's kind of cheating in a way, but like for a lot of the projects I'm working on, it's just so much quicker to do that than recording everything separately and all that sort of stuff. So those were a couple oh, of cool bit, plugins yeah, and stuff. But I don't use that often. Like it was kind of like yeah. mainly for this project and I use it a little bit for others for Foley stuff, but I've not had a chance to go back to it um, since, but yeah, it's cool. Mm. No, I was, um, I was working on a, a feature a couple of years ago, which had all these zombies and stuff um and I, I needed to do all these zombie deaths and i was like okay maybe i'll maybe i'll be able to use this kind of thing this is when it just i think it just came out and uh i i posted like a message to them and i was like oh if i get this can i put in my own sound libraries and i, I you know I, I don't mind if you guys sell the sound library i just really need it for this project yeah. and um they were like Oh well, here's here's the Reformer Pro beta. If you want to be a beta tester and give us some feedback, we'll we'll hook you up That's and sort sick. it out. So, That's so I got awesome. to I got to beta test a couple of their things. Like um, I think I did June, which is the one that just came. Or actually, I don't know if it was called. It's not maybe not called June. Maybe I just broke something there. Whoops. Um, but it was <laughs> there's a synthesizer. There's a synthesizer out now, so it's it's the one that just came out. It used to be called June. I can't remember what it's called now. Um, yeah. that, that does a cool stuff is there as well. So yeah, Krotos, um, cool company. Uh, I'm the same. Haven't been able to use their stuff that much. It's it's a little bit like um, the new Boom. Have you seen the Boom Turbine library? It's no, like what's well, not a library. It's like a piece of software that makes you generate planes and turbines and stuff and uh you're just like that's cool i don't know how when i'll use it but yeah well that's the thing like some of All these right. are very like uh project specific you know like mm. even um because i know i don't know if it's crotos or someone they've got similar one for guns as well where you yeah that's one basically yeah, that's yeah weaponize or whatever and then same they've got a car one or something as well or someone does have a car one as well but like at the end of the day if you're not just dedicated to doing sound design i guess you know specific kind of sound design you're going to use them once and you know probably not bring them out yeah. for years so yeah it's all good well that's it and it's hard it's hard to look at some of those libraries you know like i've been looking at this uh new thing by boom it's called sound sound weaver because it does all these like crazy layering tricks where it'll grab the same kind of sample from your library and you can hit randomize and it'll like keep everything in the same spot, but kind of swap them out and give you like an alternate sound effect. So if you needed yep. to do like bullet bullet trails or something, you could just, you know, flick randomizer a couple of times, but man, it's like 200 us and you're just like, Oh, I don't know yeah, how well, much is, I need. Yeah. This that, is the other thing know. as well, right? Like they all build up like one thing. So, um, did we talk about your door of choice? What do you use your pro tools, man? generally well so I, i've i've been oscillating between th three in general um i i started out in logic and i probably still compose and do some sound design wacky stuff in logic just because yep. it's still you know second nature to me um live performing is always ableton don't do a lot of live performing nowadays but when i do live performance with ableton and then the rest of the time it's pro tools yeah yeah cool um because uh, so I invested in, I could get new endo. I think it was eight at the time and they did 50% off. Um, and because of the, this studio, they live stream on a Sunday and they want more channels, like obviously Pro Tools, unless you got hardware, their HD hardware, you only get 32 channels. So this is a good way of getting 64. And I like went to work on a project with new endo and it is a really great piece of, piece of gear or piece of software. But I found that I was a ton slower and I knew that the sound that I was mm. getting out of it was just not as good as Pro Tools. I knew that like all the cleaning up I was doing, everything, I just wasn't as quick and it just wasn't sounding as good as I knew I could get out of Pro Tools. So that, uh, that in, transition period is so hard yeah, now. And I, I, I probably shouldn't have done it on that project. And after about a week, I was like, this is not working for me. And I went back to Pro Tools and then just forked out to, because I needed it 5.1. That's the other thing with Nuendo, you get stuff like that within you endo where pro tools you have to get ultimate if you want 5.1 and so i just like yeah. stuff it i'll pay for that license and on, on that project 
um, and kind of haven't stopped paying for it. Um, but the thing with like Nuendo is it has so much of like that randomizer that you're talking about. There's so many of these like plugins and stuff that are automatically in it. It's great for making games, game audio as well. Mm. And you get all that within it, which is fantastic. And I think the thing with Pro Tools is you do have to have so many third party plugins and software to do just some of this stuff. Even as you say, like using something like Logic might even be better because just it's yeah. meant for more doing that kind of like being more creative and I don't feel like Pro Tools. Pro Tools is essentially good for editing and good for mixing, and that's you know what it's there I for. I think really. I've, I've I've definitely noticed a change in some of the sounds that I've been able to get out of Pro Tools compared to Logic. Like with Logic's um, Logic's native plugins are just so good that you know there's just there's like 15 different types of modulation plugins, and like the the reverb's better than the Pro Tools reverb, and the delay design is better than the Pro Tools delay. You know, there's just so many so many great little things that I, I guess I just, I just stopped using logic just because everyone else uses Pro Tools. Yeah, and I know. I it's just, so hard. Well, I, that's good enough. I've you got know, a bunch of mates. All this. Yeah. yeah. I've got a bun bunch of mates and we do the joke of it's the industry standard and stuff. And uh, it's just, you know, one of those things that it is and you can't, you can't yeah. do anything about it. It's just always everyone uses it. And if you don't, you're kind of in trouble. The crazy thing I've seen um, yeah. recently is like uh, all of those guys that I mentioned before that are right at the tippy top of the industry are are flicking to Reaper. And yeah, okay. I was just like, this is really surprising. Like I, I really didn't think that it was actually going to happen. But, you know, I like people working on the Call of Duties and the Destinies and this, the Star Wars is well, now doing a lot of their design stuff on Reaper because they can they can do all this crazy you know, they can just do all this stuff where they, you know, um, just so many macros and stuff that, that you have yeah, to spend okay. time building up. Like Pro Tools, you know, for me, Keyboard Maestro with Pro Tools has has turned it to a point where it's pretty quick, but um, it's it's just hard to to get it to the point where it's really as fast as what Reaper is apparently. But but I, yeah, I also okay. can't I also can't give that forty minute well forty minutes forty days of change over time to get it to work properly. Yeah. Tamara. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's all good. Cool. Uh, well, we're going to wrap it up pretty soon, but I want to ask you uh, if there was a film, TV show or game that has been before that you would have loved to be a part of, what would it be and why? Oh, man. That's really hard. Before, I think when I was thinking about this question, I was really into like the the Samorost series because it's just a, a video game series. It's by a pretty small, uh, a pretty small company in I think Denmark or something, and uh, it's just a, one of those really creative projects where you have to take everything and decide what it's going to sound like. You know, sometimes yeah. maybe I. I I hate those projects where you you feel like you are only a sound editor, as in something where you're you there is no creativity of what to do. You just know that you know you have to put footsteps here and do this and that. And like obviously, there's there's still creative aspects of that, but I I, I find that sometimes, especially maybe with a really big sound library like I have, um, I find myself sort of dragging and dropping files all the time and and not getting out there and recording my own stuff or, or trying to get creative with it. Cause it's, there's so much great stuff out there now. Yeah. So something that I, 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 I really wanted to be part of projects that require um, just some, something really special from a sound design point of view, someone to, to really take something on. Like I think a really early short film I did was um, which really blew me away was this project where uh, we had like multiple lines of dialogue, just talking over the top of each other for the whole of the short film. And the, the, the which doesn't sound like it would work, but the trick was to try and make it work and to try and turn everything else into nonsense and keep focusing in. So I found myself going into specific dialogue lines and cutting out, you know, vowel sounds. So you only had consonants and then you couldn't really tell what the word was or or the opposite to try and focus in on on sounds and try and try and take it to another kind of level so i guess that would probably be a pretty cool um that would be a pretty cool sort of series to work on in terms of maybe a a film or a or a picture i'm trying to think of a man any anything star wars i was yeah. i'd be so keen to do a star wars thing like i i i got to do dialogue editing on um 
a, a, a tiny bit of dialogue editing for the the new Call of Duty that came out, and they were like, okay, the next game we're going to announce the team for the next game really soon, and it, you know, I found out that the next game was going to be the um, whatever that new Star Wars game was called, and I was like, oh man, I'm so close, and I didn't end up getting it. So I think a, a Star Wars game would be pretty incredible. Yeah, I've not like that's one thing I'm I've not really done a lot of game. Um, work at all like well, I haven't done any any game work at all this the, the game-esque stuff that I did was more they were just like cut pictures so it was basically mm. just animated cartoons or whatever that kind of go anyway I can't give you any more details but it was just more cut scenes it wasn't actually the the work and stuff and I would it is it's an interesting and a different beast I guess it's like, especially when it comes to it, it is more programmed and all that sort of stuff when it comes to the mixing side of things and you know there's just there's so much to like obviously your answers are more about the games and stuff and it is a, a totally different beast but i guess there's so much more room for creativity in that space mm. um when, whenever yeah. you've got the a chance to sort of abstract a little bit you know i'm, I'm working on all these audio dramas at the moment because i've just found uh, this whole audio drama community and it's it's been really funny because you know you don't have to worry about matching shots or something you know, yep. you just, you can, you can cut really hard between people's lines because, and bring up the background atmos a bit more and it won't sound weird because people can't see the person on the screen. They're all yep. imagining it. And it's the, the amount of creative freedom. Like, how can I tell the story of this person with a gun to their head? Because I can't just say, oh, I've got a gun to my head. <laughs> you know, I have to, I have to like hear the gun click yep. or something and I have to give it yep. this big pause and then hear the guy's breath. And then I have to like orchestrate this performance of characters that don't exist, yeah, which is, 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 is something really fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm actually one of the, so the very first feature I worked on plague, one of my favorite parts of that film was um, they're in the, they're in, uh, they're basically hiding from zombies and they're inside this shack and basically there's zombies surrounding them. And then someone comes to, basically save them they don't know who he is or whatever but i got to build this whole scene and all you see is this girl walking towards the door of this shed and she's oh, just occasionally cool. jumping because they they clapped on set and so she was like they're gunshots but then i got to build this whole scene where there's zombies you know you can hear them making their typical noises or whatever but the guy pulls in on his car and he's doing like doughies and you can hear them getting hit by the car or you know he's shooting mm. at the same time and crank you know hitting his horn and I got to build this whole scene that happened outside and obviously the only reaction, reactions you get are her jumping when she hears the gunshots but I just love being able to, same deal like you have to build just using sound build this this whole scene or story and you can mm. be as creative as you want and pull you know how do it however you want but um to, to not have any restrictions on you know what you see is just so good to, to have that flexibility that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll yeah. wrap this up in a minute, but do you want to tell us uh, where we can see your work, whether it's, you know, your website, obviously you're streaming on Twitch as well. So everyone, if you're on Twitch, chuck a follow, it's Weaver Audio, is that right? Uh, your yep. forward yep. slash Weaver Audio. So definitely uh, chuck a follow to him over there. Um, but yeah, tell us where else we can either see your work or, you know, IMDB or whatever it might be. Yeah, so uh, I think IMDb. I'm like many Australian filmmakers in the process of updating it forever. So yeah, um, probably the, the place to see is um, either checking out, um, yeah, checking out just maybe the stream is is a really good place to just get in, involved with the work and see the kind of stuff I do. And then um, if you go to Scowling Owl Sound, so Scowling like the facial expression, Owl like the bird, and Sound like what we're talking about. Um, that, that would be, uh, the place to go. Otherwise where we're generally just nowadays where I'm, I'm hanging out in the discord and, and, uh, and on Twitter under D Weaver audio. Um, so if you, yeah, if you, if anyone wants to see anything that I'm working on or, or, uh, work on something together or whatever it is, um, those are the place to, to find me, I suppose. Beautiful. Uh, is there any questions on the stream? I probably should have asked that before we start doing that nice little wrap up there but uh does anyone actually have any <laughs> questions at all uh we've covered some serious stuff there but yeah we probably i, I suppose it... next time next time we'll probably ask midway points but i guess i guess it'll happen we got we got, we got 10 people 10 people watching and some people are probably hiding out somewhere ben yeah. ben says phoenix 2 by crane song I, I i crane song is so weird for me because crane song is so prohibitively expensive and i haven't been able to work out 
what's great about them. But a, a mastering engineer that I work with a lot is just obsessed with them because it has like a 19.9 K boost or something. And I was just like, okay, who benches the most out of us two? <laughs> well, good good question there, Wolfbagger. Good question. What do, uh, what do you bench, Benny? Not me. I haven't benched anything in a long time. Um, oh. I don't even think I could remember when I was uh, maybe uh, two 20 kilo two, kettlebells. I don't know. Maybe? I, don't know. Yeah, uh, I mean, I probably top out at five, 600, maybe. I don't know. Five, 600. Yeah. That, that beats me. I'm about 400, I reckon. So, yeah. yeah good yeah, good probably, job there. Good question there, Wolf. Yes. <laughs> We're soundies. We We're scrawny little things that, you know, hide away in dark rooms. We don't work out. Man, I, I guess would I would holding a bench boom. a lot more, but you know, now that quarantine is that's the only reason. <laughs> it's all good, Wolf. If you're gonna ask a question, we're gonna have to answer it, aren't we? Or anyway. <laughs> Pretty much. All right. I mean, well, if we've got no other serious questions, uh, let's wrap this up. But it's been awesome. You are the very first, mate. You are the very first on Noisy Chat. And uh that's great. you are the first to also start streaming, uh, which, you know. Well, after me, of course. Well, but I mean, it's first. so. No, so no, no. I, I can look, put the second person on. Yeah, you're the second. But no, no. I, look, <laughs> I take it as a form of um, just a compliment, really, that you, you know, you're following suit. But I think it's so good that we're doing it because I, I would love for more to be on there because I think, like, even within our mm. industry, the film industry, gaming industry, TV industry as well, I think, like, if we're all on there, we're just going to elevate each other and stuff. So I even, want to say to you. Just, you yeah, even a really quick one, just for for people that feel like um, they're the, you know they're breaking um, NDAs or something. You don't you don't have to stream that stuff. You know there was there's some stuff that I'm looking at doing of just like redesigning a sound from a game or something. Like you can just get on and practice. You don't have yep. to you don't have to present. You don't have to like you know j- jump out of uh, and try and show everyone everything. You, you just you we're just practicing. We're just working. That's all this yep. is. You know we're yep. not doing anything. And- no. And even like I do spend as much of my time as I can explaining what I'm doing and interacting, but I guess you don't even have to do that, right? Like, as you say, if you're just sitting there building sounds, you don't have to do the interaction. I think for people just to watch the process and even like, you know, I'm the last project I've worked on, I've gone from the very beginning all the way through and it's been hours and it's a lot of it's probably been boring as heck, but it's showing every bit. If someone really wants to watch the whole thing, they can see everything that I've done and either learn from it or you know, see what you shouldn't mm. do. But I think, yeah, it's, it, we should all be getting, getting on here and just showing our workflows. And as you say, just doing the work and having people watch. So plus, plus we need um, a category, right? We've, we do. Still, I've, I've reached out. Creative. Yeah. Yeah. I've reached out. So, you know, I don't, if anyone knows anyone at Twitch and can hook us up, we need our own category. Um, that would be awesome. But thank you so much Weaver for being the first, my being my first as well. Um, Thanks, but man. you know, it's been, it's been fun having a chat and we'll definitely do Is this again. What's that? Was, <laughs> was it good, good for me? Was it good for you? <laughs> Always mate. Loving those dulcet All right, tones. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much guys. Thank you very much for watching on the stream and, uh, yeah. Thank you Dave for being a part of this thing. So it's good. All right guys. Thank you. Good night.